oh, 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 more power. I am excited about the unboxing today. This is a special. It's uh, the, the first letter in the, in the, the name of this e-bike is X. I wonder if it's experimental. X, it's the X26 by Enguay. A little fear and trepidation about this bike. It's, um, it's if you can picture a little, tiny little bicycle pedal or a <laughs> motorcycle, this is right in between those two. It's, it's, uh, it's almost to the point of a motorcycle. It's supposedly, I haven't tried it out yet, but from what I hear, it's 1,200 watts of raw power in this bike. It um, has two batteries. It has a range of like uh, over 60 miles. That's a long ride, really. So let's get at it, and we'll open this baby up. I mean, who doesn't think you need bubbles to open up an e-bike, right? And here we go. Woo! Oh, oh baby. Oh, my head. Wow, this is really packed. This just looks awesome. I don't know if you, I am serious about this. Looks like the tires need a little pump up. They're down a little bit. Whoa. <laughs> Okay, it comes pretty much assembled. Parts, let me put that on the workbench. My clean workbench, bicycle seat. This is the rear seat. There it goes. Look at that. Look at the tread on that. Oh, there's a snowstorm coming. I bet I'll get to try that out. Look at that. It's like a mag wheel. Very well packaged. Handlebars. Let's set this thing free. It's a fairly heavy bike for, um, for e-bikes. I think it's on the heavier end, but it's just so solid. Wow. It's got three different sets of shocks. Should, should give a really smooth ride. All right. I think I'm going to go right to putting the tire, front tire on, get it up and get it on the kickstand, and then put the rest of it together. I want to lay it back down for that. Just a quick look at what came in the packaging. Directions, of course, very important. Pedals, charger, the back seat. I'll read the directions, see how that goes on. And then the, the other seat. And wrenches, that's actually what I'm after right now. This may be a little tricky doing this alone. It doesn't show in the directions where, where these washers, and there's three nuts on this side versus one on that side. It looks like, I'm sorry, there's two. Looks like the two inner ones would stay, they would stay tight. And then I, I'm thinking a washer on each side. Let's see if that works. We have to slide the disc into in between the, the hydraulic brakes. That's kind of an upgrade feature. It seemed easier to do it this way rather than have it standing up to me. I may change my mind in a minute. I have to be very careful putting that in between the brake, the, uh, the pads, brake pads. Okay, I'm going to try it even a little more differently. Do it like the old bicycle style, put it upside down. Right. You can see the, the, the disc has to go in between these pads. 
So we'll go carefully with that. Feels like that's seated pretty well. Got a washer on each side. It looks like maybe, I think I'm going to put a second washer on this side. It says to just roll it to make sure it looks like it's in well. Out. Okay. That closed up the gap, so there's an extra nut. <clears throat> Not counting me. Now I'll flip it over and then I'll tighten everything up. Move on to the next step. Just going to clean everything up here. Kind of like a, a clean working environment <laughs> to a degree. I have to clean up those after the fact. Tighten, the, tighten these nuts so the wheel doesn't fall off. Both sides. Gives you a, like a bullseye to figure out where you want that positioned. You can go forward or back. I'm going to, I guess it, that will be an experimental part. I got a little ahead of myself. I thought that this would be, by tightening these two screws, would tighten the gooseneck, but apparently it still doesn't. So it, I, <laughs> I actually read the directions. This little grommet comes off. And it takes an Allen wrench, and you just tighten that more. All right. And we'll put that little grommet back on. It'll keep it weatherproofed. Let's mount the seat. So this releases this. So that goes up and down. I'm going to put it up because we're going to be using an Allen screw here to tighten the seat. So there's a few parts here. It's the bottom piece, the top piece, and then the, the uh, nut, the bolt, I mean, sorry. Just turn that sideways. It looks like there's some freedom of movement there. And then an Allen wrench. Okay, I'll tighten that up. It like, looks like a good firm seat. Just put this seat down where I can reach it. Where, where it's comfortable for me, I guess. Probably, we'll try that. In here, uh, up on the top, that was the, the main battery down in here. That also acts as you can adjust the seat up and down. There's an on-off button here for the battery. It lights up when it's on. You can see the brake light. That's just a marker light, really. It's not the brake light. A couple of details. It comes with two sets of keys that do different things. You want to make sure you hang on to these. When you open this up to expose the battery that's in here, this is what you use to unlock it, to remove it, so that you can charge. By trial and error, I found out what this key does. There's, when you lock the seat in position, my wrist still is hurting, so I don't, can't do much, and you push this button down, I thought it would be to, to hold it in place, which it is, this, but the button won't come back up unless you use this key. You just turn it and it releases it. 
So make sure you hang on to these keys. And then to plug into a battery, just line up the, the three prongs. They only go one, one way. You hear it snap in. That little blue ring, you turn it to pull it back out. Again, my wrist is not in very good shape, so I can't do much with that. Like that. So I'm just going to leave it in, plugged into this one. See if I can fire this baby up. We'll do a quick run around on the controls. Over here is the power on button. Just hold it in for like three seconds and then it'll power up. Pedal assist. So you can increase that or decrease it so that the pedaling will help you more or less. Goes all the way up to, I think, to, let's see, five? Five. And then down here we'll decrease it. The center, the center button will change some of your readouts, power, trip time, maximum speed, 32.5. Woo! Average speed, total distance, and so on. I think we have a bell. A, a, oh, -ho! get out of the way. Woohoo! Over here, the Shimano shifter, eight speeds. It's in first right now. When you're operating, the front one will shift it up another gear like that. Each click puts it back. Pretty straightforward. All right, let's go for a ride. I'm wearing gloves this time. It's a little bit cool out there. You can see I'm set on sport. Make sure you can see that. On zero. Over here, to change that setting from sport to something else, you push this middle button and hold it for two or three seconds. So it changes to assist. Hold it again, normal, and sport. With sport, it's, uh, you don't need to pedal at all. It's completely motor driven. And again, the, or to uh, gear up, Every time you press that up button, it goes up to a five. And then if you want to lower it, you hit the lower button. I'm just going to leave it on five. You can uh, adjust it with the throttle. It's ready to rock and roll now. Let's give it a try. It's kind of cold out, but I'm going to try it. It's hard to tell. I'm sorry. Hopefully we're headed, you can see. <laughs> Here we go. It's got really good power. Still getting used to the bike. <laughs> Thirty nine and a half miles an hour, top speed. got three shock absorbers. It's pretty good suspension. And how come it quit? Oh, there we go. Must be because it went over the speed the motor cut out. We're on a coast going down this hill. This is a really, really steep hill. Probably hard to get the, the feeling of it just riding along.
I've run some smaller e-bikes, tried to go up the hill, and they, they didn't get very far at all. I'm going to turn around here. Oh, we've got some deer tracks there. Go a little further. All right. Let's turn this rig around. All right. So we're starting up the hill already. 23 miles an hour. Nope. It's not going to make it all the way, but it's already gone farther than the other two. That'll give it a little boost. Needed to get some exercise anyway. <laughs> That's pretty easy. It is cold outside. It's only in the 20s Fahrenheit. My nose is running, my face is beat red, fingers are cold. This is another pretty steep little incline here. Is it going to make it? Oh, it's going to make this one. Nice. I need to go home, it's cold. <laughs> Burr. I should have dressed a little warmer. And home again. Ta -da. <laughs> Whew. That was a cold, cold ride. We're back and uh, I am impressed. This thing really moves. 38 or 9 miles an hour. Uh, and it's 23 degrees Fahrenheit outside, so I got a little bit chilled. I am currently cold, and of course I'm still currently getting over COVID and the flu. So I'm going to go up to the house and just sit and uh, have something to, to drink. I don't know what. All right, we'll shut this baby down. for riding the snow. <sighs> Clear. Wow. Pretty cool. It gets around really well. <laughs> oh, 
Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please check, the, check out the link in the description box of this bike and check it out. They have some other ones available as well. Thanks for watching. Have a, have a great day. We'll see you.